Okay, uh, hello everybody, I'm Georgios. I'm very excited to be here as it's my first non-virtual event since I, start, since I started my PhD three, three years ago. And in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to present you a method for developing interpretable probabilistic models for short-term solar power forecasting. Okay, let's have a look at the outline of today's presentation. Initially, there will be a quick introduction of the problem that we are facing. Then I'm going to thoroughly describe our approach using natural gradient boosting for generating forecasts and the SHAP method for actually interpreting those forecasts. Then we will have a look at the data employed in this research. And finally, there will be some results and conclusion. Okay, let's start with the introduction. Um, as you may know, integrating renewables to the power system is a rather challenging task. Due to the stochastic nature of renewables induced by the volatile weather, weather conditions, and due to the fact that renewables are connected to the power system through power electronics, which leads to a decline in system inertia. Um, to this end, accurate and reliable power forecasting can actually alleviate those challenges, allowing us for large-scale renewables integration. However, most of the existing state-of-the-art approaches found in the literature are based on complex machine learning algorithms, which are considered black boxes. And therefore, the more complex become those models, the harder it gets to understand them and explain the results. Therefore, in situations or in applications where safety-critical decisions are to be made, like the power system operation and control, the trust in those black box models may be questioned, especially by the system operators. At the same time, renewables are traded in the electricity market, and therefore, bugs in the forecasting models used by the energy traders may lead to a loss of profit for the trading company and also for the producer. And in general, um, even at big tech companies, many bugs in machine learning pipelines may not be discovered. To tackle this issue, we propose a two-stage forecasting approach, where in the first stage, we propose the application of the natural gradient boosting for yielding probabilistic PV power forecasts. And to do so, we use as input data, some temporal data like information about the month, some weather forecasts, and three lag power values. The power generation, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and 45 minutes before. And as you can imagine, we have a 15 minutes um, granularity in our data set. In the second stage, we calculate the sharply additive explanation value, which is, which is the unique consistent way um, for provi providing explanations about the model predictions. Therefore, we can actually um, decode, let's say, the trained model. And as a result, we can identify some learned physical properties. When it, we can explain all individual predictions, um, we can detect possible bugs in our machine learning pipeline, and eventually we can gain trust in the model. So, as already mentioned, we apply the natural gradient boosting in the first stage. And as its name implies, it's a, it, uh, it is a gradient boosting algorithm for solving uh, probabilistic regression problems. And as the rest of the gradient boosting algorithms is based on the sequential training of several base learners. Um, now, in its general form, um, the algorithm comprises several base learners, um, which are tried to estimate the parameters theta of a parametric probability distribution, P of theta, given our data set. In our case, we are using the normal distribution, but we've tried out a lot of them. Um, and finally, we, have, we need to evaluate the predicted distribution. So we have a scoring rule um, which can be seen as equivalent uh, cost function in the classical machine learning. And to train this model, um, there is only one option, which is the natural gradient, but I will not go into the details of that. Okay, um, and yeah, maybe for the base learners, we use shallow decision trees. Now in the next stage, um, we, inter we calculate the sharp values in order to interpret the model predictions. but um, what do we actually mean by interpreting model predictions? Um, so model interpretability is usually defined by a set of feature attribution values that quantify um, the influence of each feature on the model output. So those are a few values that 
um, indicate how much each feature contributed to the final result. And the estimation of those values can be seen as a cooperative game theory problem, where each feature contributes differently to the game. Um, in other words, uh, let's assume that we have a team of young engineers um, who participated in a Kaggle competition, they got the first prize, and they want to split the money uh, based on their contribution. Now it has been theoretically proven that there is only one unique solution for a third contribution. And this is by calculating the sub values, which express how much each player contributed to the final reward. Now, if we substitute um, each player with the corresponding features of the model and the total amount of money that the team got with the model prediction, we will end up having the same problem set up. Okay, but how can we actually calculate those sub values? Um, to do so, we observe how the model behaved. Sorry. How the model behaved with and without a specific feature. And we do this for all possible feature combinations. Now, as you can imagine, this results in a very challenging calculation, uh, which increases exponentially as the total number of features increases. Now, fortunately for us, um, the guys at the University of Washington propose the method which allow, uh, allows us to calculate the exact the exact sub values in polynomial time instead of exponential time, but only for tree-based models. And now let's go back to the, to the problem that we have, the application, um, and let's have a look at the data. Uh, we use time series data from two v PV parks located in southern Germany. Um, the time resolution is 15 minutes, and we are forecasting day ahead, meaning that we start forecasting at noon today, and we um, we forecast for the next 36 hours by performing recursive multi-step ahead predictions of uh, 15 minutes interval. Uh, the training set comprises one year of data, and uh, the test set we test over the next month. Um, we discard the night hours since there is no PV generation, there is no sun, and importantly, the input the input features that we are using are some weather forecast and in particular. Uh, temperature, re relative humidity, precipitation, wind speed, and solar radiation. Um, we use some temporal data, um, and in particular, the information about the month and the time of the day, and the three lag power values. Uh, the power generation 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and 45 minutes before. Those are the autoregressive terms. And finally, we map the cyclical month variable onto a unit circle in, in order to ensure con the continuity of the month. Um, and now let's have a look at the results. Uh, just really quick, uh, in order to evaluate the performance of NGBoost and uh, probabilistic PV power forecasting, we compare it with um, two probabilistic machine learning approaches, the lower upper bound estimation, the Gaussian process. Um, so here we can see the average root mean square error and the continuous rank probability score, um, which is a metric for evaluating the predicted probability distribution as a whole. Um, for a test month during spring, summer, autumn, and in winter. Um, and as we can see by the, the blue um, bar, which corresponds to the NGBoost, um, the, this algorithm outperforms uh, both the lower bound estimation and the Gaussian process in all seasons for both RMSC and CRBS. Um, but the most important thing is that at each time step, we can determine which feature uh, uh, we can determine how much each feature contributed to the final result. Um, for example, and we can do that for both the point forecast uh, and the prediction interval, so the standard deviation of the probability distribution. Um, so, for example, here we can see that uh, the power generation 15 minutes before contributed. Um, had the, uh, the greatest influence on the model output, and they pushed the model output to increase. Um, whereas the power generation 30 minutes and 45 minutes before uh, pushed the model output towards the, the opposite direction. Uh, similarly, um, those features which are shown with the red over here um, pushed the standard deviation of the model to increase, so they tend to increase 
the uncertainty of the model. Whereas the information about the hour has a positive effect in the model's confidence. Okay, now if we combine all the individual explanations together, we will end up having something uh, called the sharp summary plot, which provides a detailed insight about the model, about what the model has learned in particular. So what do we see here? Um, so here on the left, um, each line corresponds to a different feature. And each feature, like each line comprises several dots uh, or points. Uh, which correspond to a different training example. Now, what is the color of its dot? Well, the color of its dot denotes how big is the value of this particular feature for this training example. And their position along the x-axis denotes the sub, the sub value. So, for example, um, those, um, those points over here correspond to high t minus 15 values. Why high? Because they have this reddish color. And they have a large positive sub value. So they push the model output to increase a lot, right? And here, on the contrary, the low t minus 15 values, why low? Because they have this blue color, um, have a negative sub value. So they push the model output to decrease. And it's really reasonable, right? Because if our PV park is generating a lot of electricity, then it is very likely to continue doing so in the next 15 minutes, and vice versa. Another interesting observation um, is here for humidity. As we can see, low humidity values have a positive sub-value. That means that they push the model output to increase, whereas um, high humidity values, which are shown here with the red color, have a negative sub-value. That means that they push the model output to decrease. And does this effect sound familiar? Well, the model has learned to reflect the physical properties of a PV panel whose efficiency decreases in high humidity values and vice versa. Um, we, can we can also plot some sharp interaction plots with, which capture the pairwise interaction between features. Uh, so we can see how the model combines two features in order to make a prediction. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have time for that. We also have the uh, sharp summary plots for the predicted, um, for the prediction intervals, so about the standard deviation. Um, so yeah, there is a lot of information. Um, you can read our paper, but just um, we analyzed all those sharp values or the sharp interaction plots. And we concluded that um, the model has learned some non-physical, physical, non-linear feature uh, relationships that follow known physical properties. And also the model follows some human logic and intuition, which is um, a very nice result because this outcome may have a significant impact on tackling the missing trust in those models in, the, in PV power forecasting. And just one last thing, um, well, Okay, we calculate the sharp values. We understood how the model, what the model has learned, how um, it made the predictions. We we come to very nice conclusions. But what can we actually do uh, with those sharp values apart from interpreting the model? So we observe that there are some features like precipitation, temperature, and wind speed uh, that are deployed only for a small set of observa observations. Uh, for the point forecasting. And also they have a rather negative impact on the, on the model's uncertainty. So we discarded them completely from the training set and we retrained the model. And surprisingly, we got an increase in accuracy of 6% um, for the roots mean square error and 10% for the uh, continuous rank probability score. Um, so yeah, maybe just very quickly, uh, three, um, Takeaways, um, in this application, we don't have to worry that much about the trade-off that we have to make in machine learning models, the trade-off of performance and transparency, because in this case, we can have them both. Um, we actually saw that the model has learned some physical, uh, some known physical properties and follows also some human logic and intuition, which is very important in, in tackling the missing trust in those things. And we actually, um, propose a practical application of the sharp values 
apart from just interpreting the results. We use them to underst understand the model, um, identify which features are the best or like or the most relevant, and we, um, we got better accuracy. So thank you very much for your attention.